Hello everyone, this is Tom Baker from MyLifeInHDR.com and today I want to take a few minutes to demonstrate how powerful the new development module is in the Lightroom 4 released by Adobe that came out a few days ago. I've seen a few demos out there already, including some really great stuff over from the guys at Kelby Media, but all the pictures that they used to demonstrate how much more powerful the development module is weren't bad photos to begin with, and I wanted to see what would happen if we took a photo that something had gone really wrong and tried to recover it. As you can see from this picture, certainly something went very wrong. Now, before it looks like I'm the world's worst photographer, this photo was purposefully underexposed by about two stops because it was going to be part of an HDR bracket set. And I took it a few weeks ago while I was in New York City visiting the fantastic folks at the Digital Photo Academy. And we went to this beautiful old synagogue and we were allowed to shoot there and it was great except there were a lot of lighting challenges. You had natural light streaming in from the outside, you had the fluorescent bulbs from the chandelier, you had all these dark recesses. I was going to use HDR for that to try to bring all of the detail out, but I couldn't handhold the long exposures well enough to really get anything useful. So instead I'm going to use the underexposed shot to demonstrate Lightroom 4 and see if we can actually create an image that, that's useful. Because you never know when you're going to get that once in a lifetime opportunity and just not nail it. So let's see what we can do here. We're going to start by attacking the major issue with this photo, which is of course the underexposure. And there are two ways to do that. The easiest way is to just go over to the exposure slider, like we would have in Lightroom 3 or 2, and just move it over to the right some. And you can see I'm bringing back a lot of the detail, but I'm also losing all of the detail in the highlighted areas. We've just blown out the stained glass window. So to me, you haven't gained anything. You've traded one problem off for another. And actually, I think made the photo worse because the stained glass window was such a eye-catching feature of the picture. So I'm going to set that back. And what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to come over to Shadows. And I'm going to pull the shadows to the right very aggressively. And Shadow is only increasing the exposure in the darkest areas. Notice how it didn't get as bright in the areas that weren't quite as dark. But it did a nice job bringing out the detail in the darkest areas. And that's what Shadow does. Shadow didn't affect the highlighted areas at all. Uh, and kept the lamps from blowing out but you can now see all the stuff that was in this photo that was invisible before. Now, I have it all the way to 100 for demonstration purposes but in real life I would probably bring that down to a more manageable level. Now that we have the exposure a little more adjusted at a global level I want to go in and work on targeted areas of the photo. We're going to do that using the new and improved adjustment brush in Lightroom 4. If anything gets you to spend the money on an upgrade or to purchase Lightroom outright, it should be this new adjustment brush because this adjustment brush is fantastic. You can do almost anything you can do in the development module, but you can do it on a brush at targeted areas. So what we're going to do here is I'm, not, I'm still not satisfied at how the exposure is in some of these areas. It's still a little dark to me. So I'm going to come here click on show selected mask overlay because I need to see where I'm painting. I was never one of those kids that could paint between the lines. And I'm going to come and very quickly, very roughly, take everything but the stained glass window. Do -do -do. Now as I get close to the stained glass window, and I don't really want to bleed over, uh, I'm going to keep adjusting my brush size here. What I may do is come over here and click on the auto mask feature which will help protect going over uh, edges etc and you can see as I get close to the window it's blocking me from spilling in now it's not perfect and I can certainly override it but it helps it helps create a nice selection with the adjustment brush so now that we have that it's mostly colored in you can see I've gotten everything but the stained glass window so we'll remove the mask overlay and then I'll come in on this brush and I'll just move the exposure up a little bit. And things have become a lot brighter. I think that looks a little more natural. It is a little noisy down here where we really recovered from such deep shadow, but I can fix the noise uh, with the noise reduction tool in a little bit. I moved the exposure up here. Notice the stained glass window stayed the same. The lights haven't blown out. We have a nice sort of exposure throughout the whole image here. Now I can play with a few other things. I can move the clarity up for just this section. And that really makes the photo pop. And I've noticed that you can really be a lot more aggressive with clarity than you could in Lightroom 3. 
I'm not going to play with saturation. I may tweak the shadows in this area just a tad. We might have overdone it a little bit uh, when we originally did it globally. I just want to get to a spot where I'm, I'm happy with the way the photo looks. And when I've done that, I'm going to hit close. And now I'm going to come up here and create another exposure bus. Let me turn auto mask off. And I'm going to do the stained glass window. Because here I'm going to do the opposite of what we did for the rest of the photo. Here it's too bright. So I'm going to try to recover some of the highlights. Now obviously I won't be able to get all of the highlights recovered because there's just no data in some of that. It's too blown out. But by bringing it down a bit, you can see we were able to get a little more detail in this area. And I actually don't mind a little blowout here. It kind of looks nice because that's the way the light was streaming in. I may push the clarity up a bit because I really want that to, to stand out. I may even push the saturation a bit. And I like that because that's in the stained glass window and looks good, but it isn't making the rest of the photo look too colored. Uh, and I think that looks good. So I'm going to hit close. And now we have the photo pretty well balanced as far as exposure. We've added some pop with clarity. I'm going to come down here to vibrance so that I can add a little color to the rest of the image. If we think it's looking a little too warm, we can come up here to the white balance and we can knock that down a little bit. And now I think what we have is an image that other than having to come down and do the noise correction or noise reduction, we'll slide that over. Still a little noisy, but let's look back here. You know, it's livable. Considering I shot it at ISO 800 and it was so underexposed, I mean, that's not horrible. So we'll take that back out. And about the only other thing I might do here is I might come into the blacks and tweak the black level because you do want a little shadow and I think black just adds some some richness and texture to a shot but there you have it I mean with a few sliders and a little work on the adjustment brush we went from this photo to this photo and if Lightroom 4 can do that for such a bad photo imagine what it can do for something you're actually wanting to show off to somebody Thank you for watching, that's it, and stay tuned for more of these videos in the future.